Prebiotic, welcome to this review video looking at the Meng 148 scale kit of the FA18F Super Hornet in 148 scale. Okay, so not a new kit, came out in 2021, but regardless, it's our next build project. Very briefly, Hobby Boss as well released FA-18s. They released, it all seemed to coincide with the Top Gun 2 movie uh, being released in that year as well. Also, point to note on the box, besides the beautiful box art, Boeing licensed product. What does that mean? Does that mean that this is the superior de facto model of an FA-18? No, it doesn't. It means potentially that you're paying more for the kit because in terms of its production, Meng will have had to pay licensing to get that logo on the box. But let's open it up and see what's inside. By the way, all this blurb, if I can find anything relevant, I'll uh, write it down in the description so you can read it in your own time. Stout sort of box. Let's see what's inside here. Nice packet of instructions. Sprues, well, these are assemblies, okay? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bags of sprues. And then we've got the water stickers and some screws and bits and pieces. Let's open these up and have a look. I think I'll start with the instructions. Okay, I've just opened up the pack. Uh, it's got like some quirky stuff inside here a cardboard printed bit of information I think it's just to give it that feeling of quality it's superfluous to the build um, but of course people like reading up on the history nothing wrong with that full color printed instruction booklet um, which goes through the usual sequence of assembly so let's just sort of go through there and have a look if there's anything unusual. Um, I think the point to note as well is that um, the color callouts are limited to only certain paint manufacturers. I'll show you that at the end. Pretty standard sort of sequence of uh, building these FA-18s tend to be sandwiched together. There is some optional parts provided here on the, uh, I think these are intakes for the cooling of the electronic systems. Seems to be uh, two versions there. Check your references. You've got the full intake, uh, air intake um, trunking provided. And it looks like there's a uh, compressor fan as well, just provided here. Looks as if you build up the gear bays as well on top of the trunking and then they get assembled within the lower fuselage section. They've made this uh, kit modular of course in order it, for it to become a, uh, a single seater and a two seater. You can see the canopy tub getting fitted on. This is going to be a crucial join here. I have been provided with some tips on how to build this from my friends. So that's going to help me a lot, and I'll share them with you during that process. Uh, interesting here, we there is some metal parts provided, and here I would have expected to see PE for what is the structure that supports the HUD glass. Regardless, we're going to be building this project entirely out of the box. There's no extras at all that I have to build with this one. You're given a few options, which is nice to see in terms of the flight controls being the flaps drooped or, and the slats as well uh, extended. So you've got that option. And the major um, uh, option is giving you the option to pose the, win the wings in the folded carrier deck position as well. That's all pretty good. All the instructions look pretty clear. There's nothing really super to note here. The nose landing gear assembly looks 
particularly well detailed from what I can see here and also it's got nice little call outs showing you where you place your water stickers so that's quite handy you see major sort of assembly step here with your flight controls being joined on I'm just gonna flip back I want to see if there's any poly caps for um, yes there is this is really welcome I really like this feature uh, Tammy has certainly do it to give you the poly caps um, <clears throat> it sort of appears as if that's like a gimmick to allow you to play with the flight controls uh, the rear arpenage in particular but really how that helps the modeler is that it allows you to paint the uh, rear tail assembly or the stabilitors separately and then join them on at the end because they just push fit on and as long as this assembly is you know sturdy enough and that the pin that fits in there is sturdy enough it's a really good solution we'll check that out as well on the parts there's obviously quite a lot of parts making up the uh, wing forward assemblies everything seems to be clear well laid out there does not appear to be a option within the box to pose the landing gear um, retracted but of course you can modify that the pylons and stores this is another welcome option as well <clears throat> they provided poly caps and pins and this is actually this feature was included in the 148 scale uh, Tami F-16s and I remember that being really welcome again uh, it may seem like a toy-like feature to allow you to fix in different armament types but also it allows you to paint the ordnance separately and simply just push fit it on at the end there is a absolute mass of ordnance provided and that is again really welcome Towards the end here we get the assembly of the ejection seats. The ejection seats um, are, well, just what you would get in kit form. Um, nothing special, nothing bad also, nothing detrimental. Also welcome to see pilot figures included as well. They seem to be, we'll have a look obviously and see how they pan out. But they look to be detailed and having separate components that make up the, uh, the pilots. There's also the option as well for the integral boarding ladder to be, to be deployed. This needs to be quite fine for it to look realistic. We'll check all that out on the parts. And here we are, a sprue tree, so you can check to see that you have all of your parts. And also a masking guide. This is another excellent feature that this kit includes. A painting mask that is die cut unlike the Tammy ones that are not die cut these ones are provided we'll test all that during the build I'm sure they're gonna be okay and here are the markings which are particularly attractive for the FA-18s I think mother I think these are the ones that excel at maintenance I think they get the that squadron will have received a prize and they get that mother mark. correct me in the comments if I'm wrong I think that's what that stands for and of course we've got the uh, VFA 103 quite a lot of details so I like this when you've got this you've got the um, um, deployment Harry S Truman 2015 so you know what ship it was on it was carrier you know based it wasn't on the land at that time um, hoping these are well researched of course I'll be looking more into that when I build it <coughs> Um, Nimitz based aircraft VFA 41 Black Aces again attractive schemes really attractive and see them on all four profiles uh, extensive stenciling and another scheme again Black Aces I think this is more of a, a low vis is it yeah this is the low vis version 101 And of course, um, <laughs> pilot or no one, this is of course Top Gun 2 FA-18 uh, scheme, which uh, no doubt helps with the marketing of these models. <clears throat> Again, welcome to see a proper layout of the 
um, positioning of the stickers and the painting of the ordnance separately including the pylons as well so that's really really quite good and as I mentioned before the color references are limited um, but advantageously you have got the name of the color you don't get that with Ravel all the time but um, what I suggest that you do is research your own colors obviously you don't need to for black white and red etc but for the actual camouflage schemes for anything like that research your own colors that's what I certainly do um, the references that they provide are Meng AK colors and also water-based accretion which I believe are from Mr. Hobby so uh, very limited not your Tamiya equivalencies or your Vallejos only two of course check on apps as well the other way to do this is to get your uh, equivalency application and check these colors but sometimes that does not work and I don't trust it I go with uh, references and um, information online basically so let's have a look at the parts okay so probably you'll be familiar to this uh, the way that I do these reviews I'll give you an overall view of the sprue I'm not going to go through every single one it's not necessary there are other reviews online just to show you the overall sort of layout and then we'll go into the macro to show you the detail so I've got the macro now and here we are in the macro just of course what I'm highlighting here is the panel line detailing is it fine recessed detail and it certainly is it is very fine very recessed and uh, possibly even correct <laughs> unknown really uh, note here as well you've also got some extruded details as well for that sensor on there I'm not too sure what it is and also there you've got the uh, low vis so-called slime lights as well so this is the forward fuselage section made in two halves and this is a uh, critical part distinctive feature of the uh, super hornets are these square or rectangular shaped air intakes with a very complex curve to it and um, no matter if it's right or it's wrong they definitely have put the effort in here uh, with a lot of complex shapes etc so that is definitely looking promising these cooling parts that sit on the dorsal rear air rear portion of the aircraft with the two options so check your references the arrestor hook with a one part molding looks really well detailed a single piece nose cone that hopefully fits quite well and also need to show you this which is of course the console for I, I think I gather the pilot or the Rio uh, again with excellent detail that would allow you to paint that but also we have got the water stickers as well to detail that so it looks uh, looks very promising in terms of its detailing as usual you get um, two off of the same sprue in many situations especially for aircraft where you've got details repeated on both sides of the aircraft so obviously here we've got the, uh, the gas bags part of the undercarriage ejector seat and pilot so and also some pylons so again let's go into the macro okay so we have the one piece exhausts which look okay to be honest they look pretty acceptable to me nothing massively complex on the Hornets um, exhausts or nozzles and that is I gather the compressor fan section that will sit inside the intake landing gear looks pretty good reasonably well detailed of course it won't be as good as resin but I haven't got resin in this case and I'm going to go with what's provided and that looks good enough uh, for me pilot's arms down here I wonder if there's m multiple ways to pose the arms there may be but I haven't investigated that yet 
pylons look sufficiently well detailed. Here's the ejection seat. Again, some mud on detail looks pretty good. And let's have a look at the body of the pilot. Looks pretty good to me. I'll be painting that up, seeing how it all pans out. And of course, want to see the pilot's head as well, which has got the advanced headset. And I believe, is there an option here as well for a pilot that looks like a pilot with his visor up? and a different type of helmet, so the legacy type, I believe. This sprue is uh, sprue C with uh, quite a few of the interior details and the landing gear, so let's get straight into that one. Also the trunking as well. Yes, you will get KO marks inside the trunking. They can be dealt with, nothing unusual with that, but of more concern is having KO marks internal to the landing gear bay doors and I'm glad to report there isn't any so excellent job Meng so far okay so I think we are looking at the nose landing gear bay with uh, some excellent detail rendered on the plastic there looks really good um, I'll say it and I'll say it again and again everybody keeps on going about Meng be about Tamiya being the best and what I'm seeing here is equal, if not better, to Tamiya. We'll see how it all goes together, of course. But um, my initial impressions are a very, very well detailed kit. Landing gear looks particularly good as well. Complex gear, of course, on the Hornet. Uh, we'll see how that all that joins up and goes together nose landing gear there lots of detail definitely made an effort this is the boarding ladder and this part certainly would benefit from some photo etch type parts to make it thinner and more in scale but again not detrimental really to what I'm seeing at the moment overall very impressed some really nice fine detail there on those linkages that make up the gear uh, probably the gear assemblies and here as well so take care removing these everything i should have mentioned very well packaged by meng obviously because it's not damaged this is a smaller sprue so i'm just going to show you in detail shot now the cockpit and uh Obviously the workplace for the Rio and the pilot. Again, nice detail, molded on detail, not flat pieces. And that uh, looks like, you know, obviously it would be suitable for either painting or using the water stickers. Part of the canopy um, system here. Note this part as well. I believe that that looks as if it could be the Part of the canopy bow and it is actually hollowed out lightning holes there again excellent to see and another console there and the glare shield for the rio i believe this part again really really good detail this is going to look particularly nice when it's highlighted during the painting stage i'm just going to give you an overview of the ordinance that's supplied start for these aim 120 charlies Note that they are molded as a one part uh, missile and also they've actually detailed the portion of the rocket motor there as well. Um, quite surprised to find these in the box. Obviously uh, makes it a lot easier because they're not assembled out of multiple components. Big kudos there. Again, that's another win. Got AIM-9 uh, x-rays I think short range infrared missiles so they've got the latest armament they haven't um, you know made the mistake of providing the wrong ordnance it seems and again there's some detail there provided for the uh, seeker head there separately and again a one piece molding and the thin the fins are the control services of the 
of the missile look really quite thin in scale again so another big plus in terms of at the ground ornaments we've got uh, these uh, AGM 65s um, I don't know how often these are deployed by the US Navy but uh, they certainly will look impressive of course these are larger so they are molded in two halves but again there's been you know no shortcuts in terms of detail and guided weapons uh, GBU which type is it GBU 16 so I think this is a thousand pounder with the guidance kit the fins etc are separate which you would expect but they have got really nice detail they are quite thin and definitely look usable to me also to note as well we have got some sensor pods on this sprue containing some of the wings so we've got the ASQ228 I think sniper pod or similar and of course I'm just going to show you the outer portions of the wing quickly while I'm looking at this they've actually provided the holes there for the for the placement of the pylons that makes things slightly easier usually you need to drill them out again nice fine riveting detail and these are the parts that you would use to um, basically uh, to show the wing in the fold or the unfolded uh, position so these are pretty bulky and look as if it's going to provide strength there's the folded portion again a nice strong piano joint there that's what you need um, if you want your model to be secure when they're really in scale um, it, they tend to be a little bit fragile so again another plus from me just give you a quick overview flight, uh, the flight control services mainly on this sprue with the multiple options for posing the um, slats flaps in different positions again we've got all the nice fine detail so I won't really expand on that clear parts canopy excellently packaged um, I think Tamiya do this as well they provide like a bridge to uh, prevent damage to the canopy so it was actually placed inside this uh, double bag type situation so there was this bag and then these parts placed within it got the front part of the canopy here and so forth I'm not going to open these up at this stage uh, I don't really want to get them scratched but I would expect them to have the seam that runs through that's typical of the molding procedure and we know how to remove that cover that in the build hero parts as I call them obviously the upper and lower fuselage I've just sort of clicked this together just to check it out as you would do and of course as we see expect a good fit I think there are going to be some small issues that we'll cover during the build um, if you want to know lots of detail about the build that will be covered on the Patreon where I share everything with the members there but you'll get a videos coming up very shortly covering this build um, I really like the form factor of the FA-18 so uh, points to note as well they've hollowed out these areas here which are the I think they're cooling vents uh, heat extraction these points as well this is where you fit the uh, the cooling for the electronic systems I'm just going to show you this if we can take this off this is push fit on but um, to note I have to be careful to remove this very very firm pegs here um, with a very positive fit and alignment which is excellent so it's really really well designed from you know initial impressions not engineered by the way models are not engineered they've got no engineering function people say that I have no idea about engineering designer went to the uh, trouble of looking at this on the CAD and coming you know up with a solution of the fit things are designed not engineered on model kits um, got great detail on here have a look at the um, shaft dispensers etc uh, multiple um, cooling ports etc all seem to be replicated and we've already discussed the panel lines 
really am looking forward to this build cracking on with it and just finally show you the water stickers okay again separately bagged as usual this is the only uh, PE component looks like the flame ring holders for the engines and inside here are the pins and I didn't show you but there is a bag of small polycaps that hold the weapons onto the pylons let's have a quick look at this um, sticker sheet and great news straight away I don't think there's anything else to elaborate on printed by Cartograph made in Italy and they look stunning got like a little bend there but that's not going to be a problem yeah you can just see straight away the quality of these so that is you know a massive plus uh, thin very usable water stickers as compared again to Tamiya which uh, you know let us down in that department time and time again here are the uh, the masks I wasn't actually expecting this they're on a uh, acetate sheet and then so they've already been peeled out for you to place on that is really welcome to see of course um, this provides the outline of the glaze portion and then you'll need to fill it in using latex gum material or additional tape to uh, fully mask off the canopy section and another supplemental sheet again printed by cartograph for the weaponry okay so that concludes the review and hopefully you will join me for the build portion see you guys soon